Hello and welcome to Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast. I am Elvis, your host, and this podcast is not safe for work. We are teachers who love our jobs, and because we love our jobs, we are going to remain anonymous while we do this podcast. Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast comes out every Wednesday and is sponsored by Lud Lamb Dramatics Educational Theater Posters. If you have a theater teacher in your building or know a theater teacher or you are a theater teacher, send them to ludlamdramatics.com. That's L-U-D-L-A-M-D-R-A-M-A-T-I-C-S. If you use the code TNAD15 at checkout, you can get 15% off your whole order. That's short for Teacher Needs a Drink 15. Anyway, if you have a story you would like to share with us at Teacher Needs a Drink, you can go to our website, teacherneedsadrinkpodcast.com, or you can tag us on Instagram or Facebook. Please, if you can, leave a review and follow us. And if you get a chance, find one person and tell them something you learned on this podcast or something you heard us say. By sharing this with one person, you can help spread the word and and help keep things going for us here at Teacher Needs a Drink. This is episode 15, and I can't wait. So, here we go. Oh, can resist. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Teacher Needs a Drink podcast. I am Elvis, your host. And to my right today, I have Bunny O'Hare. Merry New Year, Bunny O'Hare. Happy Festivus and New Year to you. Yay. And returning, we have Turd Ferguson. Hello, Turd. How's it going? <laughs> it's pretty good. And to my left, I have the Miss Sparkle. Miss Sparkle. <laughs> Did you forget who I was? I was going to do some kind of introduction, and the then delightful. it just went on. The delight. Yes, she, <laughs> she is, is a delight. delight. Yes. I am a delight, y'all. Full of glitter. We're still on break, everyone. Merry New yes. Year. <laughs> so, anyway, Miss Sparkles, why don't you kick it off? Okay. Um, this comes from K-R-O-N in Sacramento, California. The headline is, California Public Schools Can't Suspend Students for Disobeying Teachers, New Law Says. Um, So these new laws will be taking effect in 2020 and will impact schools across California. Starting next school year, it will be illegal for public schools in the state to suspend students in first through fifth grade for willfully defying teachers or administrators. Then from 2021 through 2025, it will be temporarily extended to kids in grades six through eight. Supporters say suspensions for willful defiance are disproportionately used against students of color. That's interesting. I'm curious what their alternatives are going to be, because there's still going to be students that are willfully disobedient. Was that the term? It's willfully defiant. Willfully defiant. So does that mean like they're being rude or disrespectful? Will they still be suspended if there's like a physical alteration? Like one of those. I mean, elementary school students, I don't think really need to be suspended unless there is a severe. Something going on, yeah. And a lot of times, there's not a lot of really severe, like there are issues there. But if something if something severe is going on when you're that little, like if you're a first grader and you haul off and start like taking a swing at somebody, like there is something else going on that you need other help for besides getting yeah. suspended. Yeah, almost always with elementary kids, some sort if, of trauma or something. Yeah, there's a trauma, there's abuse, there is something. That needs to be looked at deeper. The problem is, is schools don't usually have resources Mm -hmm. to handle those things. And so I think part of this is it's always easy to say, okay, we'll just get the kid off campus as opposed to, hey, why don't we look deeper into why this student might be behaving this way? And it is, I've read a lot of articles about how suspensions for like kind of what some might consider petty issues yes. are used disproportionately against students of color and um, students who are low socioeconomic status. I understand the impetus bet- behind such a law. My hope is that um, it is utilized wisely. I think, I don't know, I'm curious if this is like we will not suspend anyone for anything. They're very specific, that is, for disobeying teachers. And I think they don't need to be suspended for just disobeying. Yeah. No. I think there's also a lot of alternatives. There is simple lunch detention. There's after-school detention. There is in-school suspension, which I think is what they want to use. I think suspension really should be 
the last resort for kind of the extreme things that are going on because the kids are there to learn and be in school. Now, granted, if they're disrupting, they need to be removed from the classroom, but that doesn't necessarily mean they need to stop learning, which kind of you assume is going to happen if they are sent home, that they are not going to be learning there, even if you send them home with a packet. Right. And if we're looking at general, just kind of this is a generality. Generally, when you're looking at, you know, students who come from families that are less wealthy or students of color, they don't have somebody at home in elementary school to watch Mm -hmm. them. So if you're also suspending them in out of school suspension for willful defiance, who's watching them during the day? That becomes a real concern, I think, of like, well, if mom has to work and dad has to work or... You know, they live with their grandparents. Who's watching these kids that were suspending just because they mouthed off to a teacher? That kid could just be in school for being verbally disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to play devil's advocate here. So let's go to the extreme side because I I support all of this. But you also have, okay, we can't suspend kids from school. We have a lot of schools that also institute policies where kids cannot fail, where no matter what, the worst grade you can give them is 60% or 70%. If they turn anything in, They have to at least get a passing grade. Is this going to just turn our schools into like daycares where kids can't be kicked out? They don't have to do work. They get to move on no matter what. We're taking away a lot of repercussions. Well, I think one, that already happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two, I don't know. To me, this feels a little different because I have, I, I, we've all had, we've all had kids who they say something disrespectful to you. And to me, that doesn't necessarily mean they've got to be suspended out of school for three days. Remove them from my class for the period, maybe give them lunch detention or whatever, but they don't need to be out of school for three days. If we're going to start just like on the flip side of that, are we going to start willy nilly suspending kids just for not bringing a pencil to school? You know what I mean? Like we've at, at some point we have to start thinking about what's a more logical consequence for certain things. And, and if suspensions are being kind of used against certain subsets of our populations disproportionate to others, then we've got to look at a way to make it fair. And I think this was just for them, the easiest way to make it fair. Also, there's, there is a small percentage of the student population that enjoys having the time off of school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, If you suspend them, that is a reward for, you know, for bad behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't want to be here anyway. Yeah. (laughs) You know, the chances of them sitting at home and diligently doing whatever packet you've sent home when they got suspended for not complying with a directive at school. Like, what makes you think they're going to comply when they get home? (laughs) And I think for kids like that, the kids who are like, oh, I know that if I call this teacher a bitch, then they'll suspend me for three days. Well, it kind of takes away that reward from that kid. Mm -hmm. I think especially in the middle school years where they're starting to push those boundaries a little bit because... Because hormones. Mm-hmm. Um, what? And, I know. <laughs> in middle school, I loved teaching middle school. I like, didn't, I hated it. I, I loved hated it. middle school. I think I'm the only person who, well, I'm not the only person, but I loved. <laughs> hopefully there's more of you. Hope, hopefully, <laughs> some of, <laughs> hopefully some of you out there listening also love teaching middle school. I teach middle school voluntarily. Like. Right. People, when people would apologize to me about it, I'd be like, I'm not sorry. I love teaching middle school because they're still willing to be a little silly sometimes. Yes. Um, some women love four-year-olds some women love being pregnant i just wish this could happen i mean people are nuts they like all kinds of crazy things <laughs> what? i think it's funny though how teachers find their their grade level niche yeah. like i yeah. can handle middle school weird but kindergartners like the body fluids involved i couldn't handle it like no. they have so many white needs. noses and and things being sticky and you, you have, have to no, set your limits like, like there's tissue go grab it i don't tie shoes I'm sorry if you're yeah. on your own like yeah ask a friend just i mean every you know kindergarten teachers don't understand how the high school teachers do it and high school teachers don't understand how the kindergarten teachers do it like middle, bless yeah. anybody who teaches anyone under the age of 12 yes blessings be upon you because i could not do that why yeah. thank you i agree <laughs> you're welcome I agree. um but middle school kids really love to push their boundaries i think even this extending only only through eighth grade kind of is an acknowledgement of like, these are years we kind of need to help these kids figure out maybe what is and isn't appropriate while they're in school. Cause then when they get to high school, obviously the consequence returns, you know what I mean? Yeah. Even through 2025 in high school, they can be suspended for that willful defiance because the thought is by the time you've hit ninth grade, you should know how to behave a little. 
at some point, you know, there's that whole natural consequences thing and we have to start training them. It's, I agree, it is too extreme to do that in elementary school and in in middle school too, but we need to start getting them used to the idea that if you have a job someday and you just flat out refuse to do what your employer tells you to do, that there's going to be consequences for that action. Right. Sometimes being grown up means doing stuff that you don't really want to do, but you just got to suck it up and do it. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes teachers just need a break and they're so fed up with the constant something that's going on. So they send a student to the office and they end up sending the student to three or four office and there might be some line. Well, if you have four, you know, office visits, you have to have this happen or some kind of repercussion. I remember talking to an administrator where I had to escort a student from a classroom up to his room. He's like, okay, well, what's it? Apparently, he was tapping his pencil too loud after she top told him to stop, and he continued. Oh. He's like, what am I supposed to do? What do you... He looked at the kid. He's like, okay, stop. You're being <laughs> rude and disruptive. The kid was like, okay, and went back to class. She's like, why'd you send him back to class? I'm like, what did you want me to do? Because it's right. all of his education Do you want me to take away his now? pencil? Uh, right. For me, like that's a small, like that's a small thing. That really yeah. should have just been handled in the classroom. That should have been like, hey, I'm going to pick up your pencil until you need it, and I will give it back to you when we start the worksheet because the tapping is driving me crazy. Thanks, bud. But imagine you had someone. Oh, you're disobeying the teacher. Sorry. And now you're, you're suspended out. for three days. I've been known to use the buddy teacher system where, you know, I'll go to a kid and say, you're not in trouble, but I think you and I could both use, you know, a five minute break from each other. Can you just go down to Miss Smith's room? I'll call and let her know you're coming and you're not in trouble. But I think we both just need to not look at each other's faces for a few minutes. (laughs) Right. And the kid nine times out of 10 is like, yeah, all right, that's fine. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. if it's, if it's something little like that, where it's just, it's not that they're trying to be rude, but we are just both about to come unhinged for whatever little stupid crap is going on. Then, you know, just, we just need a break from each other. I'm a big fan of putting kids in the hallway. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. Hey, just go to the hallway and like, I give myself a few minutes to do some other things or help some other kids while I kind of calm down and whatever Mm -hmm. about like this kid's driving me nuts. Go to the hallway. Then I can go to the hallway, talk to them rationally and let them back into class so Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. they're not just going down to the office for nonsense. Yeah. I had a vision chart. Well, it looked like a vision chart where, you know, like the big first letter, two little letters below it gets smaller, but it was a poem and I had it on the back wall. The kid was really pissing me off. Like, hey, go stand on that and read the chart for me. I, I can't look you. Just go try to see how much that you can memorize in the next minute and a half. Just let me breathe. Get the fuck out of my face for a moment. <laughs> when we're looking at, especially in elementary, like they're with those kids all day. Like in middle and high school, eventually the bell rings and those kids go off to their next mm-hmm. class. Yeah, that's true. And bye, elem- Felicia. <laughs> yeah, like, bye, get out. It's been a good 45 minutes. <laughs> Until go. tomorrow. <laughs> Until tomorrow. <laughs> but with elementary, you know, they're with their teacher For the most part, I don't know how all elementaries are, but when I was in elementary school, um, I was with my teacher just like all day until we did like our little rotation. And that was like maybe an hour or two of the day. Otherwise, you're with the same kids, the same teacher all day. Mm -hmm. So I get that those little things can build up and feel so big. I totally understand that. Do kids need to be suspended because Bobby doesn't bring a pencil to school every day? Nope. No. Or because... You know, if Bobby uses inappropriate language and he's in the second grade, then you should be referring that kid maybe to their counselor, yes. not suspending yes. them. Yeah, yes. there's, that's that's one of those red flag things. Like there is something going on. If right. A second grader is using words that I didn't know till college. Yeah. Okay. Like then maybe that kid needs to have a deeper you, conversation with someone. You, yeah. you didn't know those words till college. I was a very sheltered sheltered person. She was a sweet little Okay. She was a good person. From Reddit, this is subbing the final week before break and I accidentally farted in a kid's face. (gasps) I swear (laughs) I thought the corner by the desk was safe. I thought the kids were all in their chairs and at tables, but nope. Little Charlie had crawled back there to read silently and he was tucked behind the file cabinet right when I let a silent but deadly rip right in his poor little first grade face. I didn't even know he was back there until <laughs> until I heard the sobbing. Little quiet sobs. No. Poor God. Charlie. Oh, God. Says, I can taste it. Oh. Oh. I have 
have never felt so bad. This week is not just for me. I, I cannot get a win this week. Poor little Charlie. Oh, oh. poor Charlie. Charlie, I'm so sorry. Oh. I'm so sorry, Charlie. Brings new meaning to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, oh. But no. I can, I can taste it. I can oh, taste that's it. That's terrible. Because they're still so, their little voices are a little high pitched, just little baby. Not his. He's got very white voice now. He's like, I've seen things. I've seen things. <laughs> So Teach. Turd Ferguson has a list of Just teacher tip. tips <laughs> <laughs> sourced from Reddit. So please, Mr. Ferguson, share some of your favorites. Have a set of office supplies that kids are not allowed to touch for any reason. And guess what? It apparently halved the person's sick days because they are not allowed to touch their scissors, their markers, their staplers, anything. It's all sacred. Don't touch it. Hmm. Amen. No, I'm I'm yeah. a fan of like this is my desk area, this is my stuff. Just don't touch. And it's hard for the kids. They want to go up and touch mm. it. And, yeah. Oh my god, they always need tape. And they're always touching my tape as pets on. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't touch it. I got burned. I, I was doing intermittent fasting after November and so where you don't eat until you know so many hours and so I had my apple or like a little mandarin orange that I'd have like kind of in the corner of my desk and like four o'clock I would eat my apple or my orange and it tastes so good at the end of the day and this little fuckwad who had just sneezed <laughs> went over and grabbed it because off my desk and was like hey what's this apple for that, that's my snack you just oh how much soap and water can I scrub an apple down with mm-hmm. I had a kid drink my Starbucks one time. What? Whoa. I I had gone during my lunch break. There was a Starbucks like five minutes away from my campus, which was amazing. But I had my drink and it was sitting on my desk and this student came up and, you know, hey, miss, can I have your Starbucks? I was like, haha, no, nice try. You know, scoot along, buddy. You know, laughed it off or whatever. I look over I turn around, answer something from another student. I turn around, and the kid has my cup, and he is taking a drink out of it. And I came all the way unhinged because you do not mess with the teacher's coffee. No, you don't. And I was like, get out of my classroom! And the same student, like, earlier in the week had taken a girl's tube of chapstick, and he was messing with it, and she was like, get it back, get it back. He put the entire thing in his mouth. Like <laughs> that. Yeah. It had the lid on it, but he just, like, popped the whole thing in his mouth so that she, I guess, wouldn't want it back or something. And so oh, I had to have this yeah. conversation with him about, like, I think you're doing this to be funny, but, but it's, it's crossed the line into it's weird, and you need to stop putting stuff in your mouth. I can't stand that shit when somebody comes up to you and it's just like, you know, hey, you got a bag of pretzels. Yes, they're mine. <laughs> Miss, can I have that? No. No. Shit, no. Bring your own. That's yeah. one that I don't get. Elementary school kids do middle school students. Like, mm-hmm. I yeah. have like, hey, I've got my life. Hey, can I have that? No. no. Uh, high no. school kids do it too, my yeah, friend. Do. Don't yeah, get it do. twisted. Yeah. I have kids <laughs> every day who would ask me. Miss, do you have snacks I can have? Miss Sparkles, do you have snacks I can have? And I'm like, like no. first of all, I do have snacks. Secondly, I don't share my snacks. No, but it's I, even I, that's like, I've got nice headphones. Oh, can I have those? No. no. Does, yeah. does that work for anyone? No. Really? Yeah, like, has that ever actually, like, worked for you? Now, I've got, I do have one student that I will, I will say is food insecure. Mm. Mm. And I know just enough to believe this student when they come to me asking for snacks that they probably have not had enough to eat okay right in the yeah. last 24 hours so like but this child is always very good about i'm like they'll ask me you know if i have something and i'll say yeah you know i'll give it to you after class so everybody doesn't freak out and the student is always very good about waiting until the end of class and being very subtle about it and right the fact that this kid is being very careful and very subtle about it makes mm. me and to me, that's totally different when you have oh, a yeah. kid who, you know, needs yes. it yes. versus a kid who's just asking just to be a butt face. Yeah. They yeah. just see a, something on your desk and they pick and it they up and start it. playing with it. Like, can I have this? No. Right. Because I've had kids in the same situation where I had a young man. Mm-hmm. This was after Hurricane Harvey um, when I was living on the, the Gulf Coast. You know, it was really hard on him. And one day he was just like, hey, Miss Sparkles, I'm just really hungry. And I was like there are some snacks in that cabinet in my office. Just like go grab a few. And I was, and then I told him like, Hey, if there's ever a day where you come to school and like, you didn't have time to get your lunch ready in the morning or whatever, just go in that cabinet and get whatever you want, you know? And to me, that's different from a kid who's like, Hey, can I have your AirPods? 
Uh I'm always going to be a little bit more lenient about food just because you don't know. I've never heard of this, and I think I want to use it. So it's called Choice Menu Days. So apparently every four weeks or so, you give the kids a choice menu. They can make up their work. They can add to their reading journal. They can read independently or um, come up with their own research topic. Hmm. Pick a day, and they just eventually just do their thing. And according to this, end of the sessions, they usually wind down with a scary story at the carpet as a reward. I'm assuming that you've heard of two-sentence horror stories. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. The kids love those. those yes. yes, exactly. So that's what I would do. So from Reddit, (laughs) we've reached the point in winter break where I'm having bad dreams about being at school. I had a dream that a teacher, who I don't particularly like, came into my classroom and caught me texting. She ran over and screamed about screamed at me about that not being what we do around here. Then pulled out a huge walkie-talkie and asked the guidance counselor to bring an IMRS form. My brain wouldn't tell me what that stood for. But she stood there with a smirk and said something like, now you're really going to get it. It was a really stupid dream. But now that I'm annoyed that a dream about work managed to stress me out in the middle of a break. Teacher, I feel ya. Regular listeners have probably pieced together at this point that I'm involved in theater at my school. And... I had a dream last night, actually. Um, I woke up kind of looking around and and that moment of panic that you have when you're not really sure if it happened or not. Mm. Um, I had a dream that the day of our performance, I was doing a student's hair for the show, like minutes before the show was supposed to start. And somebody came to me and told me that that student was ineligible and was not allowed to be in the show anymore. And I was in this dream panicking and trying to figure out ways to hide pieces of the script on the stage where they could still look at it. <laughs> it was terrifying. And I woke up going, wait, what day is it? What day is the show? Do, is, is so-and-so still eligible? Like, I, yeah, it was not a fun way to wake up. Oh, no. no. And that's when you breathe and you go, I've still got a few more days. <sighs> right. Go back to sleep. Go back it's to sleep. only Saturday. Going back to school causes aches sometimes, especially yes. in the middle of the break. If I feel like I haven't relaxed yet, I know... For many years before I started working for private schools, I would legit get angry and depressed when I saw back to school commercials in the oh. middle of summer. Like and I they would start go in the middle of July store and they'd have like that stupid like little school bus set up with like the papers and stuff. It starts in June. Yes. I know. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, target. I just got out. I am not ready for back to school. Put that away. Yeah. I would start getting angry, I'd start getting depressed, I'd come yes. home and like wanna just Kick the dog. No. Oh, oh, he's a good boy. Not the dog. He's a good boy. It makes me irrationally angry when I walk in in June and there's back to school displays up. I'm like, yeah, I just no. want to set something on fire. Like, no, it's too soon. Yes. Put it away. I Put despise Target. <laughs> oh, although as someone who really used as a small child loved going to buy my new school supplies. Yes. I still have that as an adult. So like uh, when the time is right, usually the first week of August, yes. I will go to the back to school display and I will pick out the things I want for the year because I enjoy that. But I don't do it until August. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah. Target, you can have your little section up all of July, but I'm not going back there. Nope. Yeah, I'm not touching it until wrong. the first week of August. Do you guys get a teacher work day before we start? Because like our first Monday back is a teacher work day. Ours is. And then we have kids, yep. which is so nice. I've I've been on calendars before that have done that, but not this year. We hit the ground running when we come back. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I used to do that. My first district did that. It was like you came back from break and you had kids and there was no time to prepare. Like yep. you had to prepare before you went on the holiday or there was no time. Yep. I like having that that day to kind of get back into the groove before the kids show up. Yep, oh, my I classroom agree. looks like a tornado hit it. I, I may have to go in <laughs> right on Saturday or Sunday or something and just, you know, do a little bit, do 30 minutes or something in my classroom yeah, because no. the activities that we had on the last day before break were not conducive to me ending the day with a clean and tidy workspace. Mm. So my last class that day before we left, sweet, sweet, wonderful human beings. They like took all my trash out and like cleaned up, which was nice. But then I still, I'm still like, man, I asked them to take so much trash out and this room is still a disaster. (laughs) So I'm going to, I know what I'm doing on my teacher work day. Yep. 
I want everyone to remember as we're coming back from winter break and we're coming into January that this is just a reminder that there are a whole bunch of kids that probably can't wait to see you next week that are excited to see your face. You might be the only adult to smile at them throughout their entire day. Your classroom might be the only structure they have. This week might feel long and it might be tough, but you have an amazing job. You're doing a good job, everyone. Keep it up. Yay. So everyone, thank you for coming and joining us tonight. Ms. Bunny O'Hare, thank you so much. Cheers, Elvis. Turd Ferguson was a pleasure having you back. Thank you for having me. And Miss Sparkles, you are a delight. I am a delight. <laughs> Cheers, right. everybody. Cheers. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast. Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast comes out every Wednesday while school is in session. If you can, find one person in your building somewhere and tell them about Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast by spreading the word. You can do the best you can. Also, you can, you know, leave a five-star review or, you know... Really, that's it. Follow us. Leave a five-star review. I'd like to thank my guests, Miss Sparkles, Bunny O'Hare, and the beautiful Turd Ferguson for joining me. And, of course, the lovely Priscilla who sits by my side while we do all of this. Please follow Teacher Needs a Drink podcast on Instagram or Facebook. And also, you can check out our website, teacherneedsadrinkpodcast.com, to leave a story or any notes. Anyway, that's about it. Thank you, guys. Bye. Got a Maslow before you bloom. Got a Maslow just, before you bloom. That just sounds something dirty right there. <laughs> I'm playing with this thing, okay? It's loud. I'm sorry. I don't it's know. Loud. I don't know what it is. Fidget. It's a clip. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to take it off for now.